Good afternoon, good evening, good metal. My name's Coop and welcome to The Spoken Metal Show. This episode is with Callum Smith of Indepths. Really wants to sit down with someone who did extreme sort of vocals and extreme, or what we, many people who don't see that side of metal see as extreme, growling, guttural sort of screams, that type of thing. Callum's really, really, yeah, uh, it's a really great sit down with him where we talk about how to prepare for vocals like that. How do you even, where do you even get started? And him joining Indepths after being uh, not the original vocalist and then the future of kind of what they're doing as well. They have a single coming out on Saturday as well, um, which is called Chemical Release. So we're strongly looking forward to hearing that. They're one of those bands that you want to keep an eye on because it looks like they're going to be doing some very special stuff. Help, they already are doing some special stuff. Next Friday, I this Friday coming, which will be uh, the 8th, I will be doing another live show, uh, a Spoken Metal Show Live via Facebook. The last one was all over the place. This one will be the same, probably. Maybe even get some guests on it. We can figure out how to do that. But it is the 8th of May, which is uh, Motorhead Day, as we know. So there's uh, going to be a fair few bits and pieces to talk about on, on that. So just checking out the, the Facebook Live thing. It also means you can directly interact with me, ask me questions, ask me anything you need to want it or want to know about metal or rock or that type of music, and I'll give you the best answer I can give, which will probably be shit, but it'll be the best answer that, that I can give. And that's going to happen on Friday, the 8th of May. Tomorrow, in fact. I had a lot of messages come through now as I've had some big spikes now on the listenership. It's clear that people out there are sharing it. It's clear that people out there are recommending it to, to people. And it's now getting a lot more listeners, which is absolutely fantastic. It means I'm getting it kind of thrown ro- right open in, in terms of guests and who we could have on the show, which is absolutely superb. But until, uh, until we kind of get to the next stage and tomorrow... Let me leave you with uh, my talking to Callum Smith of Indepths. So I'm with Callum Smith. I'm not really with Callum, as these things are often over the uh, the, the, the the fantastic thing that is technology, even though this has been a, a, a little trial trying to get this fucking uh, up and running. But we got it up and running. That's the spirit that we fucking we, we need right now. So we've managed to get it all, all up and running. So like I said in the introduction, uh, Callum is the, the front person, the, the lead vocalist of In Depths, and we're going to get into In Depths most, most definitely as well. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, thanks for coming on the show, Callum. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Been, a, been an honour to have been invited on here, to be honest. An, an honour. <laughs> Trust me, that will fucking fade very quickly when you realise this is just this madness. Yeah. No, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I think one of the best ways we kind of start these things is talk about where you kind of started your musical journey, where you found music, and then we'll move to kind of the the the, the, the band now, and we'll move towards the, the 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 single that will be coming out in a few days' time as well, which we we want to get into as as well. But the best place to start, I find, is where you first got introduced to music. Yeah, oddly enough, rap music I was first introduced to. So it was uh, me brother mainly just listening to that in his bedroom and. I was a couple of years younger, so you know I'd clock on to it, and yeah. So oh, was it like that. was it was it rap? Was it gangster rap? That type yeah, of thing? gangster. All, all the oldies are you know Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, all the <laughs> all the big ones. Yeah. But yeah, I, then uh, I think it led. Then I was probably about twelve, thirteen. Need for Speed Most Wanted came out, and I was playing that game, and I think Disturbed Decadence was on the soundtrack to it. Oh yeah, oh, it's amazing. Just... It's amazing how many people, um, uh, especially in the generation of like PlayStation and Xbox and things, the first sort of music they hear is on video games. It's crazy that like. Yeah, well, that, that was like the because nobody I knew was listening to metal at the time, so it was my yeah. first time of hearing. I was, oh my god, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I need more of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's then fun. obviously it progressed heavier from there. <laughs> so it was so it was disturbed and stuff. So what did you do? How, what, once you knew that band, did you? Was it just an internet searching for disturbed or what? Yeah, what search for that. Then uh, spent a lot of time on blogs and things. I found other bands through that YouTube suggestions. Yeah. Uh, go down the rabbit hole then, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So start, what was start with what was what was the band that kind of you're most connected with then so once you're listening to these bands there must have been one band that you were like this is fucking exactly what i'm about i think probably the first one that really like led me onto the sort of music that that in depth does uh would have been like the old like myspace deathcore so things like suicide silence uh chelsea grin them sort of guys, especially yeah. vocally, Chelsea Grin, like he was probably one of the first one with those highs he did that made me just go like, wow, yeah, I want yeah. to be doing that. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there will be some uh, younger listeners who have no idea what MySpace is. <laughs> um, long, a long time ago, they used to be, yeah, MySpace, that's crazy, isn't it? That, that used to be the, the kind of the, the sort of medium du jour that people used to kind of put their music out there. It was mad, and it was like, it was kind of like Facebook before Facebook, wasn't it, really, essentially? Uh, it was the the, the personalisation MySpace offered, though, it was like so much better for bands. So yeah, it it's like... Only, it, it, Especially you like at the really time, all these crazy, Facebook. colourful themes and things, wasn't it? And yeah, it, you could you can't really change your Facebook band page. It looks like pretty much everybody else's yeah. page, doesn't it? Yeah, you could do you could personalise it on MySpace. It was kind of like the in between between a Facebook site and a website, isn't it? It was kind of like in between that, that type of thing. Like, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, does it, it still it, exist? Does MySpace still exist? I don't think sure it, it does. I they shut it down. Did they? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no one went on it anymore. Like. Yeah, no, yeah, it did die death. <laughs> I remember but, that. Isn't there a guy that when you first joined MySpace, wasn't it Tom or something? Yeah, Tom. It, he's probably yeah. sat there on his own now. <laughs> no, no. Well, it, it's funny because I, I was I was reading something on Twitter weirdly, and someone put up like, you know, where the fuck's Tom now or something? Like, what's he doing? He's my first friend and stuff. And he put up a picture of him on some fucking wonderful beach with with lovely people and this amazing life that he's got because he's obviously fucking. Million yeah, so I suppose now. Tom made a shitload of money off that. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> fucked off now. He's not done anything else with it. He's just gone like, see you later. I did my space. I've claimed me fucking millions and see you later. He's not a, he's not around like Mark Zuckerberg or something trying to save the world and stuff. He's just fucking, see ya. Done, done and he's fucked off. I love that. Yeah, best way to do it, though. <laughs> so so we, was it on forums then that you were kind of going, what should I be listening to and, and, and what was going on then, yeah? Yeah, it was. Uh, there was a lot of... Because obviously at the time, emo music, scene music, that was a big thing. So, yeah, it was just cause like the the sort of underground bands of them. When and it was still possibly capable to have an underground scene, you know what I mean, without it being the exploding onto the mainstream, it was almost like you had to really put the work in to find a band. I suppose now Reddit's it's probably its closest equivalent where you kind of people yeah, will suggest bands you see on the mainstream thing going on. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, last night I was li- I was sent some um, some Russian deathcore, and oh. that's, that seems like a that seems like an underground scene. Does uh, it sl- 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 now. To prevail by any chance? Uh, I can't. Remember. I was about six or seven tracks, and I remember the, uh, the so what they were doing vocally, they were uh, in, even in a live sense were 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 putting effects on the vocals as well, oh. which I thought was really nice. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So. It, 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 you know, like you know, often when you hear the vocalist, the, when they finish singing a particular thing, you can hear the 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 the, the, the back the delay slightly that they may have yeah. to have a bit of reverb. Well, instead of that, they were were um, pitch shifting the voice, and fucking hell, Jesus, it was it was it it, it was probably one of the heaviest things I've heard in some time, and it was it was kind of it, it was deathcore, but it was doom as well. Um, and it was just, it felt like, the, it felt like, you know, some of the guys shouldn't be hearing of, you know what I mean? Like the, the mainstream didn't have no, any idea what this was. Um, was it something I want to hear though. <laughs> yeah, not, well, exactly. <laughs> now you want to hear that. Dave. And that's, I think that's what happens is that, you know, we gravitate to the stuff that people say, well, you shouldn't be listening to that. You shouldn't be hearing this. And, and you kind of go, well, now I fucking want him. You know, when you, when you first get into heavy music, one of the first things you do is try and search out what you consider the most heaviest thing. You try yeah, whatever that yeah, is. Definitely, which that led me to all the slam bands and like sort of the the one man grind projects you'd get on YouTube. Yeah, all this kind of weird laptop metal that people would put together in the bedrooms and kind of put out there. There's some fantastic stuff. I found um, the algorithm through through that. Yeah. Oh uh, my god, the algorithm. Oddly enough, yeah. Um, very first time because obviously I'd, I wasn't in in depth from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, very first time I saw in depth, it was at a gig with Hacktivist and the Algorithm. Yeah, and oh, oh. and and the, they were they were doing really great. Well, he was doing you know really really great stuff. Um, and I remember seeing him at, at, do a download as well. And it was I, I remember thinking, how's he going to be when it's just him? But he just basically got a load of you know uh, tech and gent music uh, musicians and got a, put a band together to do his set. But it was think, fucking brilliant. And I'm that sure when like, I saw him, it was around, just just him and the drummer yeah i think um i I, I, the first time i saw him he played in chester you know you believe that did he um yeah when when trojans first came out 
and he played there, and I was like, fucking, that's amazing. And I sent him a whole thing saying, like, I really love the stuff you were doing. I think it's a nice mix of electronica with, with metal and stuff. And he sent me, like, the album and stuff and T-shirts. Just a fucking superb bloke, like, you know. Um, and it, what really what, what's interesting to me is that is that is how people find music now. Um, so you're listening to odd stuff on MySpace, and people are sending you links and bits and pieces. This was probably at the time of Napster, probably the tail end of Napster and that type of thing. W- was there a particular um, band, one particular band that you kind of really kind of rang the, every single bell for you? Probably it was Chelsea at the time. It would have been like Chelsea Grin. Chelsea Grin, yeah. It was that whole. They had three guitarists just chugging the hell out of yeah. the same note, and I'd never heard anything that heavy and chuggy. <laughs> yeah. So for the, for 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 the people that maybe don't know what we're talking about, chuggy is if when you when you play the guitar, you palm mute. You can palm mute the strings and get a real sort of physical kind of visceral sort of low end chug like a like imagine a train like a ju- ju- ju. and that there is kind of like the basics of of, of most of heavy music you'll you'll find that, that that's the base of it and it's a real sort of tell all if a band can't do it properly um and it's, it, this is at the birth of breakdowns as well and um, when kind of bands would have these huge where they would take the riff and they would just slow it down and that oh. would become this breakdown and and then that's born slam and and beat stuff is yeah well the chelsea grin did that yeah got me i'd never heard i think it was recreant that one at the end it just goes like super super slow yeah and i'd never heard anything that slow and brutal and it was yeah. just yeah i needed more of that <laughs> so when you, you you listen to this did you just kind of fall in did you just get everything that they they did and just listen to entire back catalogs then yeah, yeah, got the because they had the little the EP. Yeah, originally, I think at the time I'd found them. Really, they only had the two albums. It was the EP and then the main album. Mm. And then after that, they released I think, two more albums while I was still like massively following that band. Yeah, because they, they they were like uh, you know spearheaded by bands like Suicide Silence and stuff like that, and and kind of they were they were kind of the next sort of iteration of what was going on with metal, weren't they? They were kind of the, so you would take like the, uh, the, the likes of your Metallica and stuff like that, that, that as it kind of moved forward. Um, there was a whole new metal movement and then the rap metal stuff and all that type of thing. And that emo and kind of that type of thing came from people inheriting like seven string guitars and stuff like that and down tuning and playing with that. And then the vocalizations of like death metal and stuff. And that's why we got like kind of math core and death core and that type of thing and blasting group. And what happened is around that time, there's this explosion of, of different genres. And um, I remember listening to suicide silence for the first time. I think it was um season finale. Is it? I think it is. Um, or one of those songs. And I, I remember thinking this sounds like the start of something else now, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Well, it felt like it, a movement. I think there was so many genres of metal that that these guys were just like taking from all these places, mm. mixing it all in. So you got so many different sounds at around that time. I mean, there was like things like Attack Attack putting all the electronic music in there, and yeah. and Shikari throwing drum and bass into the mix. It was just, there was so much going on at the time. Was was like you know. Was the epoch of that type of stuff then sort of bring me the the horizon? Because they started sounding like like one sort of band, if you know what I mean. And now they kind of progressed and they've become the, the band that they are now. They were kind of the darlings of that scene almost to a certain degree, weren't they? Well, yeah, everyone loved Ollie's hair, didn't they? Yeah, with the, <laughs> things like Shadow of Moses and stuff like that was kind of the, the, the rallying cry. Was I remember seeing uh, Bring Me the Horizon when Ollie used to, remember this, when Ollie used to come out with the uh 118118 vest on and he didn't have uh, any tattoos on his neck or on his or virtually no tattoos and he didn't oh. wear black at all and then i remember like seeing fast forward to that yeah, that was at, uh, at the, the downstairs of the academy in liverpool you can believe that and and then fast forward i think I, and he's playing like they're playing stadiums and stuff and arenas and, and he's got tattoos up the wazoo and he's like all like drenched in black clothing i was like what the fuck it seemed like extraordinary but they were the they were the kind of the poster childs for that sort of 
era, I think, in certain to a certain degree. And some bands survived, and some bands, I think, I, I think didn't. So, what, were you were you playing an instrument at this point, or were you thinking about being a vocalist, or where where were you as a musician? Well, oddly, I started with drums initially. Okay. So, yeah, I think it was what I just mentioned it now and again to my parents. Then my dad brought a drum kit home one day, which pissed me mum off quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Did so, you? Yeah. Did, so when you're drumming, were you drumming along to those records, or were you drumming along to something else? No, I, what I, I, it was all self-taught, really. So I, I'd just stick my headphones in, and it yeah. was all sorts. It was those sort of records. I'd stick on the likes of Cradle of Filth and try and okay. drum along to that as well. That's big. Uh, that's big mountains to start walk, climbing up, isn't it? For like, um, essentially blast beats and and double 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 uh yeah. work and stuff yeah and... i sounded shy at the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, what shit well, like, don't get me wrong, i couldn't play these songs but i tried <laughs> <laughs> where does cradle of filth come in because that seems like an interesting thing to but, come in there it's kind of in that world but not is it you know but i think what it was when, uh, growing up like one of my mates was a really big goth yeah <laughs> And he sort of introduced me to all like things like Cradle of Filth, uh, a lot of industrial music right. as well. I was going to say, because there must have been a point when industrial stuff came in, because that's all over in depth stuff, that industrial kind of... Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely like the sounds and the samples and things. Yeah, but... yeah, that kind of, that seems like it's a, it's a massive part. So you're playing the drums. Did you kind of st- start to play drums with anybody else? Uh, no, I could never find a band really because it was. <laughs> As a drummer, you couldn't find a fucking band. <laughs> Callum, I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I could, but they were all indie bands. Ah, um, oh, right. Yeah. Can you come along? Want to play that? <laughs> Two hundred BPM shit, and they're just not fucking playing. So yeah. did you kind of go, okay? Well, I still want to play music, but I'm going to kind of leave the drums. Then what? What? What was the shift? You know, I don't really know how I fell into the vocals. To be honest, it's. I think I just started trying to do like pig squeals for a laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it just, that's it probably just a lot of that. A, a lot yeah. of that stuff started like people like going, "I wonder how high I can scream. I wonder how low I can growl." And then yeah, that thing well, see, came that was another thing back to the Chelsea grin. I heard those piercing highs, and it was sort of like, "Yeah, how do I make that noise?" Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, it might be hard for some to, someone who's not a vocalist to see that. Like you, as a guitar, I'm a guitar player. So when I hear the guitarist make a noise that I haven't heard before, I try to imita- uh, imitate that noise. I imagine the same for being a vocalist. If you hear a vocalist doing something, you're like, fuck, I'm going to try and do that then as well. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's like you hear like Dickie Allen from like Infant Annihilator rip out one of those nasty lows. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I'll spend hours trying to do it. Still can't do that, but I'll spend yeah. hours trying to do that. And yeah, just the so amount, you... especially at the moment, the amount of sounds extreme metal vocalists that, yeah. out here that i've not heard before it's insane well there was a time as well there still is it still is where there's there was dual vocalists you know um and and they would kind of take care of different elements of the sounds you know what i mean um you do it to kind of take different portions of the sound i remember seeing rage and speed horn uh recently and loved the the, the difference in the vocals from having two vocalists kind of the delivery i thought that was really and that was something kind of born that was it's been around for a while but it was kind of born there we had that dual vocalist thing as well i used to fucking love that like yeah well that. i've seen that i think angel maker uh modern like deathcore band they sort of do the two two mm. dual vocalists but both doing harsh vocals yeah the way they just bounce off each other it, it's really effective and then they can actually do those nasty dual vocals live as well then can't they <laughs> which yeah yeah well that's always that's always the big tell isn't it when you go and see um, you know, I remember seeing uh, Cannibal Corpse and thinking, "How the hell is this going to happen vocally? How how the hell is?" And it was, and it was exactly what, and it worked perfectly. Like seeing Devin Townsend, it's like, "How exactly is he going to do Ocean Machine? How is he going to do this?" And then him doing that, and I was like, "Fucking hell!" And that's the that's the real test, like you know, to be able to do those things live, yeah. you know, because the, the strain from the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the strain on someone's voice, like the. People don't maybe don't realize it, that vocally, uh, vocalists get a bad rap. They get a bad rap because they don't have to carry their home gear in. They, they, when they sound check, they just have to turn up and, you know what I mean? They get a bad rap sometimes. The other side of the coin to that is that if you're a vocalist, you have to be so protective of your instruments. It's unreal. If you get a cold, you probably can't sing. 
You know what I mean? If you overdo your voice, it's like a muscle. You know, you yeah, can still play is, guitar is. if you if you've hurt your arm a little bit, you can get through it. Vocally, you strain your vocal cords. It's fucking over, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. You're done. <laughs> and 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 that's why, like, the amount of vocalists I know wrap the, the the throats and towels and shit, and don't talk to people before the show and don't do interviews before the show and that type of thing because they're trying to maintain their instrument, you know. Yeah, it is. it's so hard finding the balance to maintain it, especially when it's, you know, you're at a show, there's alcohol flowing everywhere, people are up in your bags and things. Well, a friend of mine said that he, does, he, he carries his own microphone and never uses house microphones because of infection. I mean, we're talking about pandemics, but, you know, because he's singing to a mic, he's like, I have my own mic that I clean myself and no one else uses. That way I don't catch any fucking... Anything. Yeah, I do the same. Have you ever opened up a house mic and seen the inside job? <laughs> Sadly, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very house, good reason why we do that. It's never good, is it? It's never good. It's never, There's always those funny memes about people going, uh, this is the house kit, yeah, it just brings your own breakables and it's a fucking, it's just a load of wood, basically. Yeah. <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> so when you... So you, when was the first time you, time you go and actually see bands then? Go out and see a live music sort of context i was probably about 13 or 14 at the time i think it was uh death stars was my first game okay in yeah station. so uh was was, yeah yeah essentially i love that venue <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. obviously, obviously growing up that venue was a massive part of my life yeah it's people people don't realize that the live venues become a hub especially at that age of meeting all the people that will become your friends for the rest of your life like you know that that's a that it's a hub and and music is playing a background to that like you know um, oh yeah de- definitely definitely i mean obviously i wouldn't have met the in-depth lads if it wasn't for the sort of gatherings where you'd all come together with the similar interests mm. so when when you do you remember sort of specific shows that you've seen at this at that age then yeah i mean that one definitely stood out being my first show and mm. i think obviously i'd listened to Death Stars, I think it was Marionette and The Defiled who were playing okay. support. Yeah. And at the time, I hadn't got into the super, super heavy stuff. Yeah. So watching Marionette and The Defiled with all the harsh vocals was the first time I'd really experienced that live. Mm. And so, yeah, that one's obviously stuck with me. Uh, yeah. and, uh, what did you go to the... after that then? Did you go to other venues as well? Did you go to like a big sort of arena shows or anything like that? Did that interest you? You know, I've mainly kept to smaller shows i've, I've been to a yeah. few i've seen like perfect circle and things in the big arenas but yeah mainly it's it's the small shows i, I enjoy mm. when, when did it take the, the move then for you going well I, I i don't think the drums are working i can do some vocal stuff maybe i should do that with other people when did you start playing with other people all right oddly enough uh about a year and a half ago <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been doing the vocals just in my bedroom, I guess, since I was probably about 15 or so. Right, right. And, yeah, about since uh, when the old vocalist left from In Depth, I got a call off Aaron, who, the drummer, I hadn't seen him in donkey's years. We used to hang out when we were about 14, 15. Yeah. And, yeah, asking if I still did vocals. And, yeah, wow. that was it. I got in. You and... just like, fuck it, I can do that. <laughs> well, it was obviously I'd always wanted to do it, hence why yeah. I was doing it in my bedroom, pretending yeah. I was I was a rock star. But then, yeah. <laughs> so, so for those that, that that don't know, Gallon is the is the, is the front person, lead vocalist of In Depth. So, before that, what did you know about In Depth before you you, you kind of decided to join and were asked to join? Um, I'd I'd listened to them since they'd started. Yeah, yeah but obviously a local band five minutes down the road from me. So it's seen them live, like I mentioned, but we'd seen them live supporting Hacktivist with yeah. al- and Algorithm. Uh, oh, I think yeah, that was the first time I'd seen them live, and yeah. it was just stupidly heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you saw them live first. Wow, okay. So it's almost like the fucking Henry Rollins Black Flag story, you know what I mean? You see a band and you think they're pretty cool, they're pretty heavy, and then that band asks you to join them. Did yeah. you... How quickly did it go from being asked to join to going and singing with them? Did you have to try out? Did you have to yeah, audition? Yeah, well, he, he messaged me just on Facebook asking me to do it. And, yeah, just asked me to do an audition video. So Okay. A video? Excited. Yeah. Okay. Not a, just an audio, a video? Yeah, a video as well. <laughs> what, what, what did he want? 
Um, there wasn't any really specific requirements in the video. Uh, I think right. it was more just to see if I gave it beans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you wanted to see some form of performance as well. So what did you send them? Uh, just literally took a video in my back room singing uh, This Is How, one of, <laughs> one of the other single, singles, yeah. and yeah, got in. Okay, and, and to, so did you just message you back and go, you're in, that's it? Like, that was yeah. it? Yeah, straight away. <laughs> so. You, so did they go, okay, we've got a gig, or did you go and practice with them a bit before we, you We started? went and practiced a bit. I had a couple of months of practice, which was obviously going from never playing with a band to yeah. straight in with, yeah, we're a band that do regular shows and all this. It was, it was hard learning everything, but yeah, yeah, we got it. And then my first show was Mammoth Fest. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sure. which most people that play a crappy little local pub, but I was like, uh for, so that for, was... for those for those that don't know, Mammoth Fest I don't believe exists anymore now, does it? I don't no, think No, I think uh, that was the last year that was. Yeah, it, which is which is a real shame. Mammoth Fest is is a, a fantastic festival down south, um with a lot of sort of tech metal and kind of, you know, progressive metal and, and a, a wide range and sort of it's a really good place to find new music. Uh, Mammoth Fest gives everybody a chance as well. All sorts of sizes of bands play there. And it's it's a super well was a superb festival. Like that's a really good fucking first one. Like yeah, that's fucking. Uh, well, I mean, it was getting, terrifying. Yeah. Do, 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 before you go on, what's going through your mind? Like first show, Mammoth Fest, pretty big crowd. What are you thinking? Oh, be honest, oh before before I went on lookout, and I just think. I can't remember any words. <laughs> <laughs> so shit. it was sheer panic until the yeah. moment I went on. As soon as the you know the guitars kicked in and it just sort of happened yeah. without thinking about it. And, you know, I came out with words, did it all. So yeah, I loved it. It's one of those moments where you kind of like snap your fingers and then you're coming off stage and you're like, what the fuck just it happened? Was, it was a complete blur. It was over in a second almost. Yeah. But yeah, coming off the sort of high you get from it, it was just like yeah. That's a baptism of fire right there. Like, did the band kind of just? We, we, was that the nod? Then we'd like, listen, you can do that. We're yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's it like coming into an already established band? Then, I mean, is the expectation for you to write? What? What? You know, how much of yourself can you put in it? What's it like coming into a, a, an already established band? I mean, obviously, at first, it was kind of like everyone knew what they were doing, and I mm. didn't, so I felt a <laughs> bit lost. But, yeah. yeah, over time, I've picked it up relatively easy, and with it all, yeah, I help out write me on lyrics and things now. and So, yeah, just just sort of fell into it, really. It's fell in so, quite... So anybody checking out uh, in-depth stuff, which I suggest you do, um, and see kind of visualisations of you, um, we've destroyed that image now because, as you can tell, Cam's a fucking nice guy. Like, um, <laughs> but he ain't a nice guy on stage, are you, Cal? Uh, no, gonna be angry. <laughs> Callum, Callum goes. Um, one of the things that immediately struck me about in depth was the the, the the real harshness of what is kind of going there. So, what what's the remit now for you with the band? What what are you kind of going? Okay, this is what we want to achieve now. This is what we want to do. I mean, we just just want to play more shows just want to get the music out there really i mean we we're obviously about to release the first single which will be the first one with me on it so at the moment it's just push that um, was there anybody was there anybody comparing you to the previous singer did you get any of that that always happens doesn't it when another singer comes in where someone goes fucking i preferred the old singer and all that shit did you or, or were the fans pretty welcoming yeah the, to my face they've been welcoming <laughs> <laughs> As far as I know, if it's that. But I think you always get that, don't you, where you have someone else taking over vocals. Like, you know, I remember when when Howard took over the vocals in, in, in Kill Switch and there was a certain group of fans that didn't like that and blah, blah, blah. It always can be quite quite difficult, like, you know. Yeah, uh, l- luckily, I've not seen any bad fallout from it. I've had, I've yeah. had some compliments and things. Nobody said, you know, you, know, the, you suck, the other guy was better. <laughs> what did you find when as well like so you're going from singing in your room and you know do, doing that type of thing to being in a band and playing live and playing regularly what did what was the steep learning curve if i'm like a vocalist in a band now and i'm just starting out what did you kind of get what did you find out almost doing that like you know what did you wait were, were you ready for almost 
Um, sleeping in vans, really. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Welcome to the business, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard, isn't it, because that affects your voice as well. If you sleep somewhere and you don't have a very good night's sleep, that affects your voice, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, everything, what you eat, what you drink throughout the day. You've got to be really careful when you're on tour, which is also a bit of a nightmare because you're trying to eat well and stopping at Mackey's every couple of hours. Yeah, it's just so. not going to work, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when you, how many shows have you have you played right now then within depths? How many have you done now? I mean, a lot. We only really had a year where I've been fully playing yeah. shows with them, but we yeah. we really went hard with it. And I mean, did you, so you have you gone out the country yet with them, or is it all still based in the UK? They're all based in the UK, but right. yeah, I mean, I've probably about. Off the top of my head, I can think of about 15 or so bands that we played with over the year. So yeah. it's, it was a busy year in terms of gigs. Definitely. So once you, once you played live and that type of thing, did, they get, did that give you a new appreciation for, for the stuff you watched or when you seen a live show yourself now? Did you go, fuck, I knew it was hard to sing like that, but now I have an, 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 an extra appreciation because I've, see, I've tried to do it myself on stage? It definitely. You- it's when you see the vocalist that just are absolute madmen on stage and yeah. are, are just going insane, climbing up yeah. things and jump. Because the energy that goes into doing both, mm. yeah, it, it, it... Someone like, you know, I mean, like, like Corey Taylor's doing, you know, two hours worth of Slipknot stuff and it's and, it, and it's and it's full hit, like it's all the way. And I remember the, some, on, one, on the last couple of shows they played, someone was kicking off saying that he goes off stage every two or three songs and stuff, and there's a break and there's a bit. And I was like, what the fuck do you expect? Like, you know, it's, you can't go for two hours like that. You know, no, to be honest, even I think we played about an hour set in Chester one time, yeah. at G21. Mm. And as soon as the gig ended, I had to go outside to get air. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to pass out if I didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then, but let, I'm outside there trying to get air. Uh, then I can hear everyone screaming for an encore. <laughs> so it's like, all right, got it back yeah, in. Back in. Back in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's, it's, I really do admire people who can go on for like two hours, three hours. It's so, incredible, right? Especially yeah. like someone as playing as aggressively as that and singing at the, you know, the height of the powers. Do you, do you have a, a, a maybe an extra appreciation for people who say they cancel tours then because the voice is shot? Because that, that pisses people off, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, like as a vocalist, I get it. I have definitely played shows where my voice wasn't on par, and yeah. it's. I think it's one of them. I can do it if it's one or two shows, but if it's like some of the bands are doing where they're out on tour for two weeks, yeah, no, you would you would just destroy your vocals doing it for that long. Nobody can really sustain that fully. So what? no, definitely, I I can understand people. Can when you kind of got brought in. To, to be in the band and and now you are a permanent fixture within that band what did you want to bring to the band what did you want to, did you just simply just want to do the job and be able to do it and in a, in a confident way or did you want to bring a, another shade another something else to the band as well did you want to offer up a, a, a you know an, another option sound wise what did you want yeah to, i mean i'd and, say the sound what the sound of the new single that, that's coming out is definitely a bit different to what we were okay. doing yeah. Uh, so the new single, the new single is out on uh, what date is that? The Saturday. Uh, the that's on the ninth. The ninth single. Yeah, and that single is called uh, Chemical Release. Chemical Release. So for people who've heard stuff like um, the the previous material, what's which way are we going with this new material and this single being the first one off? Obviously, it's still very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say we've probably gone a bit more. Genty, if okay with it yeah yeah the the guitar tone is probably the thickest sounding guitar tone i've ever heard <laughs> so yeah it's all about big sounding aggressive sounding so Did on you, that have front, you, we're still the are same. you kind of also thinking uh is this, is this the, the tip of an album iceberg we we are writing things at the minute <laughs> Is it cause is it cause of this sort of environment that we live in now that the the things like albums aren't really kind of jumped upon and it's better to release things singularly, if you if you will? 
I mean, I think it's a, it's definitely it's a good way to build up. Mm. Really, I, I the way I see it. Good. Say if you do three singles over a few months, you're building up hype then for the album that's not, probably going to come. Yeah, because the uh, the often <laughs> argument is that if, when you listen to an album, that songs get missed in the shuffle because you know there's twelve songs, ten songs, whatever. That there's you know the, the a particular song will get lost. Whereas if you release them slowly and like you say, pipe feeding them through to the album. Do people listen more and they'll kind of take it on board rather than having just like 12 songs and they just go, oh, I haven't got time to break open the album? I think it depends what type of listener you are because mm. I've always liked listening to full albums. Mm. Like, I'm I, one of them. I, was... I probably couldn't tell you which songs I liked because I don't know the names because I just put the album on. Yeah, yeah. So I think it comes from it comes from the way people stream music now, isn't it? And Spotify and stuff. That's how they listen to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Everything actually, everything's very quick. You want it now. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so when, when when's the? Have you tried out this single in a live situation yet, or is yeah, it? We, we've played it live a couple of times. Did you change anything after you you played it live? Did you go? Do you know what? We'll keep that middle eight going, or will will the intro can wrap around a little bit longer? Did you change anything? No, no, we didn't really. We we sort of kept it how it is. I think the writing process, we take a lot of time to go through everything and make sure it is exactly how we want before trying it out live. Is this the first time you've submitted lyrics as well to the band? It is, yeah. Was that a bit nerve-wracking? <laughs> it was at first. I've, I've <laughs> wrote a few of the things that haven't come out yet now, though, so, so, so what, what's it's getting this, easier. What's this song about, then? This is Chemical Release. What's it about? It's about problems with uh, like drugs and alcohol, mm. mainly. So it, it, it's wrote mainly from things I've seen with people who I've grew up with, uh, personal experiences from people within the band as well. Mm. Is it is it difficult? Some one of the things that gets leveled at like, you know, everything from uh, screamo and, and and all that type of stuff and all any type of aggressive music vocally is that the 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 content of the lyrics gets lost because of the force that, of which they're delivered. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so people... I think I think that can happen quite often. It, you'll hear with these singles, I tend to actually pronunciate quite a lot. That's, I what, that's what I was looking to, can. yeah. Is the, the thing that struck me with the, with, 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 with the sort of the vocally is the, is the enunciation seems to be the best, you know, you can deliver it powerfully, but if you if it's enunciated correctly, it really carries some weight. Then, and yeah, know exactly what you're talking about. I think it's it's about striking a balance between the two as well, because mm. you you've got the bits where you do want to be saying something, mm. but again, sometimes when a breakdown hits, you just want to make a horrible guttural noise. It, well, that's <laughs> and this is the thing that maybe uh, the uninitiated to metal don't understand that sometimes the inaudible growls are are meant to be an audible growls you know not every single thing coming out of someone's mouth vocally is meant to be a word that they can understand it's an effect sometimes yeah exactly you know? well it's it's using the it, the voice especially more as an instrument exactly because well, you're just yeah. going for a tone and a sound more yeah than... the, the best way i can explain it to someone who do, who isn't in, involved in that scene is when someone is in a like a doo-wop band um and the humming along or doobie 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 and all that type of stuff. It's the same thing, just really distorted. You know, yeah. it's the same thing. You know, you know, um, you know, let's say let's say for example, I feel free by cream has that uh do 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 uh, that's that's not he's not singing a line, he's not singing a word. He's singing the melody. That's what you're doing from a heavy point of view, except you know, you just you you, you it's like with a chainsaw. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people think that you know, your guitars though you put distortion yeah. and things on your guitars to make it sound horrible really but yeah, that's what exactly. you want <laughs> yeah because that's the effect you, you want but that's what puts people off the, the first thing that gets leveled at heavy music is i don't understand what the singer's saying i've, right? I've had that to me a few times yeah <laughs> and that's not necessarily the point you don't necessarily have to understand every single thing that they're saying it's more about the energy and the vibe that they're giving right yeah exactly it's an atmosphere uh, yeah that's what that's all, especially live that's what we're trying to create just an aggressive loud harsh atmosphere yeah so 
do you one of the things that come up i was on um uh, uh getting to this, this live stream and they were talking about how people and, and release anger and release side of kind of tension and, and things that they're pissed off about and a lot of the times i put up the case that metal is really great for that is that i don't know many aggressive metal vocalists or guitar players or drummers or whatever who come off stage pissed off because it's such a good expenditure of energy and um, do you find that when you come off stage, it's almost like you've had a workout and you kind of like, I've got no nothing left. I'm not angry at anything anymore. Yeah, well, it's it's like a, it's a rush. That it's just a pure adrenaline rush when you come off stage. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 joy almost really. <laughs> See that, and this is the other thing that if it, maybe the uninitiated don't don't understand about metal is there is a wonderful joy in that release. You know what I mean? And that kind of like oh, being swept up from in the it. artist and from the listener's point of view, like, because mm. there's nothing I love more than pushing around a load of guys in a mosh pit. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that video, the, the, the girl being shown out to, to, to pit, you know, the, the kind of guys are casually bumping into her and stuff and she's like got a big smile on her face. It's awesome. I love shit like that. I love seeing yeah. um, the, the wall of deaths and I love seeing the, the disabled guy gets lifted up Oh yeah, I've wheelchair. seen that one. That's brilliant. I think they're just massive sort of um, examples of joy and and, and kind of diverse, you know, tackling adversity and overcoming it. I think they're fucking brilliant because that's once again we're breaking all kinds of sort of taboos and what people think it is. The pit is about fucking love. Is about it fucking is. It, it is. looking it's after not... each other. It is. Somebody falls down, you pick them up, and it's yeah. one of them. But everyone comes in. It doesn't matter who the hell you are you everyone's involved no matter what and you know yeah. it's it is it's just a good it's a great experience did you did you kind of when you look out and you see people pitting and stuff and that type of thing did you do did you ever get a moment where you think i i can do this i can be a a, a, a metal vocalist or, or are you still kind of like i'm still finding me feet but do you did you, have, you, have you ever looked out and gone you know what i think i think i could do this i think this is where i'm meant to be so I don't. I didn't really ever think I would be here, to be honest. It was, <laughs> sure. <laughs> it, yeah, it kind of just kind happened. Of just happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's the best answer. That's the best way it should be. It just kind of happened. It just kind of life. Life happens while you're planning other things. Like yeah. yeah. And so, what's the plan from a live point of view? Then I mean, no one knows what's going to happen with this fucking quarantine, and it's fucked a lot of festivals, which I imagine you would be heavily involved with yeah i mean like i know one of them which had been announced which had to be postponed was like mortal metal fest down in uh, london yeah, yeah, yeah uh like a crania and osaya headlining so it mm. would have been an amazing show for us yeah. to have been on same i know we had to cancel a run we had booked with monasteries as well oh, shit so yeah, yeah it's affected us badly in that sort of sense in mm. terms of booking things at the minute it's no one's doing anything are they? No, really? it's just hope it comes back soon and so, we so, can do so it as, as, as a band how are you kind of dealing with this are you, are, you, are, you, are you kind of doing anything online are you kind of just hunkering down and writing where where are you are you kind of yeah, interacting we, with the fans or what's right and obviously at the moment we've been very busy with all the release up to the single and things and getting the video sorted and all that kind of stuff but yeah, I guess we've we've been doing a bit of writing, sending mm. pieces to each other online and things. Because obviously we can't meet up and do it. <laughs> you must be like a caged animal, though, because you you know you a guitarist can sit and play, and you know work on that. But vocally, you you need an audience, right? You need yeah, to have I mean, you need I've, to have that connection. I've been going mental in my room when it's like <laughs> screaming and things still. So yeah, <laughs> but pretending there's an audience. But yeah, it's it is it's a nightmare being caged up. Yeah. I just want to go out and play a show. <laughs> I think as well, uh, you know, there's a there's a wonderful scene at the moment for for extreme and and heavy stuff like what you're doing at the moment. I've seen some some great stuff. I saw Law uh, in in Liverpool. Um, oh, yeah, I've played a few and- shows with them. They're great lads. They were they were fab. We saw. I, I went to see them at the Jacaranda downstairs uh, in a very tight venue, and that was fucking insanely good. Um, you know that was. You know, there's a very, very sort of fertile uh, live heavy scene because that's the thing, isn't it? There'll be people saying that there isn't anything that the underground doesn't exist, that there's no new music coming through, whereas there's bands like yourself 
straight up getting on with it and doing it. Do you find that? Do you think people don't realise that there is some of these great stuff, great bands going on, you know? I think, yeah, a lot of people don't, because I mean, a lot of people just don't go to the places where they find out about these things. Mm. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the scene is definitely still alive. Hundred yeah. percent, like I said. Oh, I think it's thriving. Like, like Lauren, for example. It's yeah. Everyone's throwing fists and spin kicking and all that. And yeah, and, so, and yeah, you know, the so scene's was, definitely still. I there. was at that show, and I was easily the oldest person there. I think most people thought I was someone's dad coming to pick <laughs> them up. And but no one was no one no one gave me any shit about it. And you know, it, it, it was there was all all kind of manner of people there, all ages, all shapes and sizes there, and everybody was just. There was there was just this complete lack of ego. It was fabulous, and the band were just clearly you know the bands that are seen there. Were, it's like it reminds me of the of the beginnings of, of a scene because from that you get stuff like Loath, who are now kind of like you know obviously getting really good attention and stuff. Um, and they're Liverpool based and it's aggressive and it's experimental and it's elements of kind of like tech and stuff like that kind of coming in as well. And it just proves that. The, 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 this stuff can begin in these small places and grow as well, and people don't realise that either, I don't think. No, definitely not. I mean, like I said, it just, hopefully we can get to grow to things like that, but yeah, it, it, there is definitely the scene there, alive, strong, and does, does need a bit of a boost, I think. But <laughs> Most we'll definitely. So if I'm sitting here now, and I'm listening to what I like to listen to and I, li- and I like in depth and I like the things that w- what's going on there. What other bands are out there that, that maybe aren't getting the recognition that you you're liking at the moment? I mean, like Bohemian Grove, for example, mm-hmm. they yeah. smash it live. Yeah. I think there is an animal, <laughs> <laughs> an absolute animal on stage. Yeah. Um, they're obviously doing brilliant. Um, there's like severance even at mm. the home uh, sorry i can't speak at the moment one of our, one of our home to, hometown bands yeah severance, with yeah, them. yeah i think we played at their comeback show yeah so they're, obviously they're releasing new music at the moment mm. i think lauren are, are releasing their i think something's coming up very shortly for, yeah, them, but, for them as well we put some teasers up yeah, the, it, it sounded brilliant as well for their new stuff <laughs> <laughs> So say I'm say, God Eater as well. I'd say. Oh God Eater, yeah, they supported Lou. They were fucking brilliant. They were, yeah, I really enjoyed that set. They, they they're super aggressive. I love that. Like, so say I'm I'm sitting at home and I really like this type of heavy music and I think I'm doing all the squeals and stuff right at home and I want to join a band. Oh, what what would you say to them? I'm a vocalist. I don't have a band. What would you say? I mean. I just kind of got asked to do it, so I didn't really... Uh, <laughs> it depends on where you are, really. If you've got mm. the mates that are there that are playing that sort of music, brilliant. If not, I'd probably say, just go online and ask people. Yeah. I think yeah. going to shows as well, people don't realise yeah. that when you go to a show, you will meet other like-minded individuals. The amount of bands that have started at shows is fucking massive, you know? Well, the, the, like I said, the, the amount of people when I go to a show, especially a local show, and there's mm. lots of people in there are all people i know from band, different bands and things yeah 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 so yeah and, definitely it is and as i say mo- most bands are in side projects as well aren't they the members so. okay, that's, the, the, yeah the, the, the music scene's incredibly incestuous in that respect like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like you mentioned before like one drummer will serve as a whole area of bands <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true i think ultimately you know what we're saying is is getting to a live show is important it just serves so many things. If you get you supporting bands, you see new music, there's a chance to see other people who uh, uh, are in bands or interested in starting bands. You know, you necessarily won't get that on, on a, on a Reddit thread or you won't get, you have to go to these shows and kind of experience that thing. It's, right. It's, it's the energy that you get at the shows as exactly. well. Like you said, there's nothing like that feeling of a, it cannot be replicated. It cannot be replicated. It can't, it can't. I always feel it seems to feel it more at the small, local intimate shows. So it's like the, the dude's like right in front of you. You can feel the spit on his face from him screaming and everything. And it's yeah, like, yeah. That's a positive that experience many places. Yeah. So listen, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap things up now. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll put a link to uh, we're ready for the for, for the single launch. The single comes out on the 9th. It's going to be a chemical release. It sounds like it's fucking killer. Um, 
it's nice to have Callum on um, and and be so nicely spoken and and civil and stuff because when I see him live, I don't want any of that shit. I want the, I want the old Callum. I want the I want the in depth Callum that I think that it may fucking attack me at any minute. That's the Callum I want to come and see. And let's hope that we have a, a, a we can get back to the live thing as soon as we possibly can. Oh, definitely, definitely. And thanks very much for having me on. Oh, you're more than welcome, Callum. What a nice guy. Like, we'll definitely have Callum on again, I think, ladies and gentlemen. So there we go, Callum Smith from from, from In Depth. And that was Callum Smith of In Depth. Uh, the single comes out on Saturday. This is uh, going to be called Chemical Release. Really great to talk to someone who does that kind of extreme metal thing. I thought that might have been quite instructive to people maybe trying to, to get into that type of thing or trying to perform that type of thing. Callum Smith's love, superb bloke, and despite us having a catalogue, a catalogue of technical problems trying to get it sorted, we got it done. Um, that's all that really matters. Like I say, there's going to be a Facebook Live show on tomorrow, which will be the 8th of May, covering all, all kinds of stuff. And being Motorhead Day, we're going to certainly talk about Motorhead. And I want to thank everybody for listening to the show so far because the feedback's been, it's, it's just, it's always really good. Everybody's such such fucking sweethearts out there. They're really nice sorts of feedback and, and some things that I'm going to include in the show and some people I need to talk to always suggest them. Keep the comments coming. Keep the sharing coming. It makes it makes it all worthwhile when I sit and listen to this. I was on and about doing the live show, but then I had a lot of messages where people said that it was it was some uh, one of the only entertainments they found on, on, on like a Friday night because they used to go out with the mates drinking and the swan or whatever it may be. So thanks very much for listening to the show. And as always, we will get through this. We will get through. We are getting through this. We are getting through this. And I will see you at the show. 